Welcome back to Juno class and now we are looking at PSLE last minute revision for our set number D. Okay, again, I wish you all the best as you are preparing for your PSLE, especially for mathematics. Okay, now let's look at our first question here from Catholic High School, paper 2, question number 3. Mm, it's not a difficult question, but I, would, I think it's interesting, that's why I picked this question. Now here say that the ratio of the length of stick W to y is in the ratio of 9 to 8. So it means that this w is in the ratio of 9 and here is actually in the ratio of 8. But probably I would like to write 9 unit and this one as 8 unit. And now we are supposed to find the length of the stick w. Okay now um, this is like a, a bit like the bar modeling but yeah but what I will do is that I like to put this in algebra. So you can see that these two are actually having the same add together, right? So you can see 9 unit plus 1.7 is actually equivalent or equal to 8 unit plus 2.9. And as you know, when you are putting algebra, 9 unit, 8 unit, you are supposed to put them together. So 8 unit, I move there. And plus 1.7, I move here. So in this case, it will become 9 unit plus 8 unit move there become minus 8 unit plus 2.9 remain at the same place so it remain as positive but plus 1.7 it cross the equal sign so it will become minus 1.7 So 9 unit minus 8 unit is equal to what? 1 unit 2.9 minus 1.7 is actually 1.7 and the question now is asking for the length of stick W. W is how many unit? 9 unit. So 9 unit is equal to 1.2 times 9, which is equal to 10.8. This is in C. And that will be our final answer for this question. Okay, and a bit simple. Yeah. I mean, if I were to make it a bit more harder, probably I will not put as 9 unit, 8 unit. I might put like 6, 2. Maybe another one is 9 unit. Again, to make it a bit harder. Lah. Okay, but again, it's easy, not that hard. Let's move on to question. This question. Okay, um, it's a paper 2 question 3 from our SCS Junior School. And let's look at this question. Here say that figure 1 is an isosceles triangle. Now, what is an isosceles triangle means? means that there will be two sides that are actually equal, have an equal length. Example, here and here. Okay? In this case, I think it's very obvious. It's here and here. Okay? Now, with a parameter of 40 cm, means that the whole thing, the length add together, is actually 40 cm. Now, figure 2 is made up of four such isosceles triangles. Means that they are actually the same, just that now have four. And I know for sure the length here, 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 all will be the same. Now the question continues to say that the perimeter of figure two is one one two cm. This perimeter is one one two cm. What is the length of PQ of the isosceles triangle here? I think it's not that hard as long as you put and mark this. Uh, Clearly, I have eight such length here, the length here. So I will just use one one two. I divide by eight. Then I will find that the length here is actually fourteen, and this is in C. So here is fourteen, and here if it's fourteen, here will also be fourteen. And if here fourteen, here fourteen, then how to find PQ? You just need to minus. So forty minus fourteen minus fourteen, and the answer would be. 12 and the un this will be in C. Okay, simple question, just a quick revision on such uh, similar topics. Okay, good. Let's move on to our next question. Okay, the next question is on Nanhua paper 2, and this is on uh, question number 9. It's a three mark question. Okay, let me just charge my computer. Now, in the library, the ratio of the number of fiction books to the number of non-fiction books was 8 to 5. 
So this is a library, ratio, fiction book, non-fiction book is in 8 to 5. So let me just write this now in the ratio table, which I prefer to do that. Fiction and non-fiction. And this is in the ratio of 8 to 5. Now, the question continue to say that after more fiction books were added to the library, do I know how many books are added? No, I don't know. Let me just put plus a question mark. I don't know how many. Then the ratio of the fiction book to the non-fiction book was becoming 9 to 4. So now it's 9. Here is 4. There were one, uh, 12,600 fiction books in the end. How many fiction books were added? Can I just say that 9, this is the end, right? 9 unit equal to 12600. Zero, zero. And the added is actually plus 1 unit. So I just want to find 1 unit, that's all. Like 12600 zero, zero, divided by 9. That's the answer. Can I say that? The, unfortunately, we cannot do that because we must make sure that the ratio here on at first and the ratio at the end here is equivalent. Okay? So how do I make sure it is equivalent? by checking on this part. Why? Because there's supposed to be no additional book or no books, no non-fiction books that's being taken away. Which means that this 5 and this 4, they are supposed to be the same. However, they are not the same. So we are supposed to make it the same by looking for LCM. So what is the LCM for 5 and 4? 5 and 4. Basically, it's 20, right? So I times 4 here to make it 20. I times 5 here to become 20. But the problem is, if I times 4 here, it affects here. So I need to times 4 here. If I times 5 here, I need to times 5 here. So now the latest ratio will be equal to 32. And here is 20, as you know. Here is 45. And here is 20. And you can now actually try to compare. 12600 zero zero is actually 45 unit. So 45 unit is equal to 12600. Zero zero. So 1 unit is equal to press on the calculator and you should get 280. And the question now asking how many fiction books were added? So 32, how to become 45? Let me just minus 45 minus 32. I know it actually increases. 13 unit. So 13 unit is equal to 280 times 13 and the answer is 3640. And that would be my final answer. Okay. So just in case you don't know, this is actually a concept where we call it as one unchanged quantity. So what is unchanged? The non-fiction books. Unchanged means what? Means uh, it's the same. And again, that's why we are always repeating the idea here that the two are supposed to be the same, but they are not the same. And you are supposed to make it the same by looking for LC. Again, a very common question here, but just a quick revision of this. Okay. So now let's move on to our next question. And our next question is from Nanyang Paper 2, question 13. And it's about graph. Okay, it's not, I think it's not a very difficult question, but it's, it's again worth revising. So the question here says that the line graph shows the amount of money that Raj saved each month from March to June. So the amount of money saved each month is in dollar. And we can just identify what is the value here. Then you get exactly how, what is the amount is being saved. Mm, this question is actually considered as very kind. They give you the amount, you just need to identify. But if I were the person that said the question, I will make it a dependent graph instead. Means that I will say, this is what I have at first. What I The total amount I have on April, means that I add March and April together. And on May, I will add March, April and May together. So basically, I will add them together to become something called a dependent graph. So this question is very good. Very kind. So let's identify here first. So this is 150. So one line above, this will be 160. Here, the line here, 50, 60, T will be 70. 
you need to be very careful okay don't make such mistake yet so 350 so here is 350 correct okay and this last one june 400 420 okay this one you need to be very careful double check on this then now once you have identified let's look at our first question a how much more did he save in May than April? May is what? 350. April is what? 70. So 350 minus 70, the answer is 280. Good, simple, nothing um, tricky here. B. What was the percentage increase in his saving from May? To June. Now again we are looking at percentage increase and it is good because definitely there will be one question about percentage increase. Again the formula of percentage increase is the amount of increase divided by original amount and I need to times 100% and again I reminded you many times do not do not include the percent inside your calculator calculation now what is my may let me just write here my may as you know saving is uh, 350 okay may is 350 then june is actually 420 okay 420. so what is the amount increase here you can just use 420 minus 350 and you get it's actually increased by 70. So 70 is the amount of increase. Original amount is 350 times 100%. Okay, so you simplify 1, it's 5, and you get the answer is 20%. Okay, simple, no, not tricky at all. Now let's look at C. Okay, C is a bit more interesting now. The amount of money Raj saved in July was one over five of the total amount of money he saved from March to July. How much did he save in July? Now let's let's go back here. Just remember this one first. July is one, five is total from March to June. July, sorry. Do I have July here? No, I do not have July here. So let me set here July. I have March, April, May, June, and July. I know July is one unit, correct? Because if you look back here, this one belongs to July. And this five belongs to the total from March to July. March to July is five. Which means that March to June is actually how many unit? 5 minus 1, 4 unit. Okay, let me just write here C. Means that 4 unit is equal to what? 160 plus 70 plus 350 plus 420. So 160 plus 70 plus 350 plus 420. And my 4 unit is equal to what? So you, if you add them together, you should get exactly 1,000. And now, I'm looking for what? July. Okay, let me just check. How much did he save in July? So July is how many unit? As we found here, is 1 unit. So you just need to do what? Just divide by 4. So 1 unit is equal to 250. And this will be our answer in dollar sign. Okay, um, very simple question and we are done for this question. I think it's kind of easy, right? Okay, nothing tricky. So let's move on. Okay, so our next question, I think is our last question for this video is from MGS Paper 2, question number 15. Again, it's about, um, about volume of water. But there's no tab here, so it's an easier question. So, figure A shows 40 cm tall sealed container. Means the water will not come up. That is made out of two cuboids. So as you can see, the first cuboid is at the bottom, and another cuboid is on top here. 
the top of the container is a cuboid which has a square base of side 5 cm, which means that here 5, here also 5, and a height of 25 cm. The bottom is a cuboid with a rectangular base, as you can see, measuring 32 cm by 12 cm. The container contains 5.755 liters of water which can flow freely between the two cuboids through the opening. So there's an opening here, so there's water that can flow through freely. Now, the question A now asks, how much more water could the container hold? Means that this container can hold a big amount of water and inside already have 5.755 liters. So how much more water can be added in? So in order to find that, I need to find the volume, I mean the capacity of the container at the bottom, capacity of the container on top, to find the total, then I minus with the volume of water. So let, let's try find this one first, okay? The capacity of this is what? 25 the height and square base right so i know here it's also 5 so the capacity here is 25 times 5 times 5 which is equal to if you press in calculator you should get 6 to 5 and of course this is in cm cube so let's find the capacity of the cuboid at the bottom here is 32 here is 12 then what is the height I know it's actually here is 25, so it's here is 40. So I know it's 40 minus 25, and I know it's actually 50. So I know it will be 32 times 12 times 15. So the capacity of the container at the bottom is actually 5760 in cm cube. Okay, such a big one. And the total capacity, let me just add them together. 625 plus 5760. The total capacity will be 6385 in cm cube. Now, this is the total capacity of this container. And now I know that there is 5.755 liter of water already inside. So uh, you should know one liter is equal to 1000 cm cube, also 1000 ml. So I know this is actually equivalent to 5755 cm cube. So my last step is to do what? To minus 6385 minus 5755. I know the water that still can be filled in is 630 in cm cube. That's it. That is for question number eight. I think it's kind of simple. It's not difficult. Yeah, when it comes to this. Now, let's move on to our next question, which is question B. Question B here says that the container was then turned to rest horizontally as shown in figure B. Find the height of water level in figure B. So I know that perhaps now the water is about here, something like this. Now I need to find what would be the height of the water level here. So um, the first thing, uh, let's try to transfer the units, I mean the length of all the, of all the things here. So I know here is, okay, sorry, I know the, the one on top, I know here is 5 cm, 5 cm, here is 25. So let me just write here first. I know here is 5 cm, here is 5 cm, and here is 25 cm. I know here is 15 cm, what I found. And let's look at the rest first. Here is 32, here is 12. So the height here is 32 cm. And the length here, the breath here is 12 cm. Okay, so now, what is the amount of water inside? Don't forget, it's a 5775 cm cube, right? Or ml. It's inside here. Now, 
I know for sure this part will be filled with water. Correct. So this part, what will be the volume of the, or the capacity of this? The capacity here as what we have learned is 625 cm3, right? So I know 625 cm3 would have already be in part here. Then if this is the total volume of water inside this tank, I have this part 625 here. What will be another part that's left on here? I'll just minus, right? So 5775 seven, minus 625 and the volume of water that is left here in this tank would be 5130. Okay, means that the volume of water here in this part only is 51130. Five, and if I want to find the height of the water level, I just need to divide by what? The base area, which is 15 times all. So my last step, which is 5130, divide by 12, divide by 15, and that gives me 28.5 and in cm. Yes, and I am done. This is 28.5 cm. So um, I think this is simple. I mean, in general, compared to the previous few sets, I think set B will be a bit easier. But it's again, it's about more about revision and revise whatever we have learned. And I hope through this video, you are able to get some knowledge on these topics. Okay, I think that's all for me. Thank you. See you. Bye-bye.